there's a lot to keep track of on a week-to-week -week basis in Stardew Valley. Even I tend to forget what days the gift limit resets or when I'm supposed to check the special orders board. So to fix this problem, this video is going to go over every weekly event in the game. Well, the ones that matter. You don't really need to know things like the Desert Trader offering three hay for one Omni Geode on Mondays. Yeah, that's a real trade. There's a couple of different categories that these weekly events can fit into, and what I consider by far the most important ones are the weekly resets. For instance, a very important one to know is that on Sunday, your gift limits reset. You're only allowed to give two gifts per person in one week. It's a little weird that this resets on Sunday because the game usually considers a week starting on Monday. Important to note, if a villager has a birthday on Tuesday through Saturday, they can get three gifts in one week, since they'll always accept a gift on their birthday, even if they've already gotten their two gifts. Sunday is also the day that all forgeables on the ground reset, so make sure you do a pickup run on Saturday if you want them. To a lesser extent, artifact spots are mixed up a bit more on Sunday. Each night, a certain amount of artifacts are deleted and added, and on Sundays, this procedure is done three times, so they're just more likely to be in new spots. On Mondays, a new special order for both the board in Pelican Town and the Walnut Room will be available. Oftentimes, the deadline is one week, so they'll be due on Saturday. That's not always the case, though. You may be wondering what day the movie theater resets. It's actually not on a specific day, it's just seven days after you previously watched a movie. And if you go into the theater but don't watch a movie, you don't have to wait the seven days at all. Other important information to know includes what days stores are closed. And while it's usually advertised, sometimes it's vague. Open most days. Well, gee, thanks. Obvious one, Pierre is closed on Wednesday, but will be open if you either complete the community center or, if you took the Jojo route, obtaining the key to the town from the Walnut Room. He's technically open every day in there, it's just you can't get in on Wednesdays. As a trade-off when you complete the community center, the blacksmith will now be closed on Fridays, since Clint checks on the boiler room that day. And yes, that means the Jojo route is technically better, because if you get the key to the town, both stores will be open all seven days, in addition to having access to Jojo Mart a few hours after Pierre closes. Now for the rougher ones. The some days that Marnie is closed is Monday and Tuesday, unless it's raining, in which she'll be open. The Carpenter is also closed on Tuesday due to aerobics, unless it rains. Although it should be said, if you absolutely have to buy something from her on Tuesday, you can briefly when she walks by the register at 9.40 a.m. and 8 p.m. She's the only shop that works like this, and I have no idea why. And while the Carpenter isn't closed on Fridays, it's worth noting that she closes one hour earlier to go to the saloon. Willie's store will be closed on Saturdays as he goes out fishing, unless it's raining, of course. And finally, in a twist, the traveling cart is only open on Fridays and Sundays. Every other store is open regardless of what day of the week it is. Now, all of this doesn't account for weird happenings like the doctor's appointments or the store clerk heading to Ginger Island. So keep an eye out. As I mentioned before, not all weekly trades are created equal, but there are a few interesting ones to keep note of. At the Desert Trader, you can trade emeralds for cheese on Friday, a very popular healing item. On Thursday, you can trade three prismatic shards for the best buffing food in the game, magic rock candy. And on Sundays, there's the famous one staircase for one jade, the favorite trade of anyone who hates mining. I've talked about this before, but it bears repeating. If you put jade into a crystallarium, it'll produce about two every three days and that can make this trade very overpowered very quickly. On Tuesdays, you can buy an Omni Geode from Krobus for 300 gold, which is the cheapest price it's available for throughout the entire game. He only sells one, though. If you need more, you can go to the Oasis on Wednesday, where she sells three for 1,000 gold each. And then once again with Krobus, on Fridays, if you're really swimming with money, you can buy an Iridium Sprinkler for 10,000 gold. And then on Thursdays at the Oasis, you can buy Deluxe Speed Grow for about half the price you can from Pierre's General Store. And while I don't find this next one quite as useful as the Deluxe Speed Grow, you can get quality retaining soil on Saturdays, once again, at a huge discount to what Pierre sells it at. There's a lot of times throughout the week where a bunch of people gather together at one place, and it can be a great opportunity to give out a bunch of gifts all at once. First on Tuesdays, all of the older women gather in the General Store for aerobics class, they are still giftable even while working out. On Friday nights, the saloon will be filled with a whopping 14 people, and to a lesser extent on Saturday nights, 8 people. 
and once you've unlocked Ginger Island East, as long as it's not raining, there's a chance that a group of 1 to 10 people will visit Ginger Island every day. Then finally, we have the TV channels. These aren't too bad if you miss them, but it can be good information to know. Living Off the Land is on Mondays and Thursdays. This channel gives you a bunch of tips that aren't explained elsewhere in the game, so I heavily recommend watching them when you can on your first playthrough. It'll give new tips up until year three. Queen of the Sauce airs on Sundays, and it'll give you a new recipe every air until year three. If you ever miss a broadcast, you can watch it on Wednesday, where it'll give you any recipe you missed. If you get a recipe you already know, you're all cut up. The Weather and Luck channels are always available to watch every day, and FIBS is as well once you complete Pam's special order. Wow, that sure was a lot. How could you ever remember Boom Chart? I've organized each item by day and within each day by type. So you can see at a glance, even without reading, what you need to pay attention to, gatherings, the TV, or otherwise. It's been a while since I've made one of these charts. As usual, you can find the image on its own in the description. If you're wondering why something wasn't covered here, it's most likely not tied to a day of the week. Everything on the list will always be true with very few exceptions. There's also quite a few things that aren't worth listing. Like every day at the Carpenter, there's a random list of furniture that's available, but it's all available for free in the furniture catalog, so it's really not worth keeping track of it. Hopefully this brings some order to the chaotic weeks of Stardew Valley. Thank you all for watching, see you in the next one, and good night.